I don't know, we go other hand. Whoa, 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 my rotator cuff. Oh! <laughs> Hold. I mean, at least on the girder, we like knew what we were doing at some point, physics wise. This is just like pure fucking. I don't even know what to say. Like, I'm, I'm basically trying to become a sorcerer. Actually, it would be sick to hold both sandbags at the same time. Hold. That's a good idea. What do you think they're building here? Uh, based on my experience in Vancouver, 64 floor high condo building, 82% unoccupied, seven bubble tea shops on the base layer. And a Royal Bank. Wow. <laughs> Maybe a weed dispensary in there? I don't know. This man didn't even say Rexall. Take your ass back to Edmonton. This is BC. We clown in this motherfucker. We're going to London drugs in this bitch. We don't do Rexall here. No shoppers? Okay, we still do shoppers. What am I gonna do here, man? What am I gonna do? There is a Rexall downtown? Downtown Vancouver, there's a Rexall? Where? Where? By Canada Place. I don't fucking gas town, downtown, east side, cruise terminal, motherfuckers. That part of the city isn't even real as far as I'm concerned. No disrespect if you live there. It's at 499 Granville. Okay, hold, hold, hold. There's one in Tinseltown. <laughs> Hollywood? Is he actually talking about real stuff or putting random words together? Vancouverites? Tell me I'm wrong. There's a Rex. Oh, you're right. There is a, you're, there is a Rexall in uh, Tinseltown. The movie theater where the dude was uh, J-O-ing at the end of J-O-J-O -O Rabbit. Went to Gastown once. Why did everyone look at me crazy when I farted? Um, I, I get the joke, obviously. It's because it's called Gastown. That being said, if you had ever been to Gastown, if you passed wind on the street, nobody would bat an eye. Some people might congratulate you. They would or come over and thank you. They would say, thanks for making it smell a little better over here.
Hold. 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 <laughs> hey Anel, I got past this part, but the part after it is so hard, I have to wonder if you'll actually ever be able to beat it. I'm not worried about you, okay? Because I don't, I don't know the particulars of your life. I'm worried about Dan. Dan is past this part, which means I can get past this part. Might take longer than Dan. I don't know. Bro, that's your friend? It's not an insult. You ever, like, get stuck on a puzzle or something, and then someone's like, oh, I found the an answer. The second ago, you were, like, immediate... You were hopeless. You're like, there's no way I'm ever going to solve this. I think I'm going to give up. Then one of your friends is like, oh, I solved it. And you look at it for, like, three seconds, and you're like, oh, I solved it too. Just, n it's powerful to know... That somebody else with, you know, the same toolbox as you has made it past. You know, you, we're not out in the woods, the, the first person trying to do this. Dan said yesterday he doesn't think you'll put in the time to beat this. Well, I got a lot more uh, time to spend on stream because I don't spend two and a half hours every day opening uh, JPEG packs. Also, when Dan eats spaghetti, he literally just eats the sauce. So, you know, you take the good things that you think would serve you in your life from other people and you ignore the rest. What do you mean he just eats the sauce? I said what I said. Where'd the sauce thing come from? It came from his his stream. It came from his mouth. <laughs> Try grabbing the top right of the first bag. Okay, get 33. Now what? <clears throat> Can you grab the wheel? That's cope. That's you trying to find that you're wishing for more wishes. Your spirit needs to get stronger. You need to callous your soul. Swing, but don't jump. Pull the bag left. Swing right and grab. <laughs> Do you ever see the videos of the guys in the gym? And they're like running on the treadmill with the bench from the bench press on their back and stuff like that? Or they're like bench pressing the treadmill? And then they'll like squat with two stationary bikes over their shoulders and stuff like that. That's, that's how I feel right now. My, you know what, what if you just got this bitch swinging? Not again. <laughs> okay, top right of the bag. It's called momentum. Oh, okay, okay. Hang on, that's step one. Step one, we made a good transition. Now, if we can make that semi-automatic for the people, 
and then make it to the rebar as like one step afterwards, then we're talking. I think I was wasting my time with all this fucked up hand over hand nonsense. Yeah, okay, okay. Did Chibli actually beat this? I mean, Chibli is a, he's a gamer. You gotta remember, he's 26. Allegedly. Can you name five Rihanna songs? Try me, motherfucker. Um, Ponda Replay. Shut Up and Drive. Diamonds. Umbrella and please don't stop this music. Now, could I name six Rihanna songs? I'd have to think about it. <laughs> yeah. mm. Can you name five Caesar songs? Uh, jerk it out, jerk it out, jerk it out, jerk it out, jerk it out. You got to jerk it out. What am I doing? Can you name five chili oils? <laughs> the duet boomer on deposition. Sir, is it true that you dip the habanero pepper in Mama Licious's Reaper oil? No! Can the witness elaborate, please? It was a jalapeno pepper dipped in Reaper's burn your ass off oil. <laughs> Objection, Your Honor, I can't. Oh, yeah, yeah, dude, we're, we're, we're in. We're, at, we're in and it's actually easy. So, <laughs> Chester's Flaming Hot Cheetos dipped in shit your bed chili vodka. Oh, man. <laughs> They can't ban this app, bro. They can't ban the app. We're chili oil guys. Of course we dip our peppers in Mama Liz's. <laughs> uh, I love the Costco guys. I'm, I want to be clear. I'm making fun of everybody else. I'm not making fun of the Costco guys. Seems like wholesome content. Also, has his son ever looked more like his dad? Except for that, now that I think about it, that one kid that Elon Musk has, who's like literally a 12-year-old version of Elon Musk. It looks like uh, Elon Musk with like Leon Kennedy's hair. Have you seen, <laughs> have you seen the picture? <laughs> 2X Elon. <laughs> no! Doesn't he have like 12 kids? Yeah. You see the interview Grimes gave where she said she cried during Dune 2 because Paul Atreides reminds her of the trials and tribulations that her son is gonna have to go through? I'm not, I'm seriously not making fun of the three year old, okay? You just, you have to have a little nuance to this bit. At no point, like she's given the interview and she's saying the name of her kid, X. AE Aether X dash fucking 12. Like, what are we doing, man? What is she talking about? Crimes, explain. No! 
Oh, that would smart, man. That would fucking sting. Her music's pretty good, though. She's uh, one of Vancouver's number one cultural exports, for sure. She fell off. Yeah, but she had Pitchfork Media's album of the year 2013 or something. Wow, 11 years ago? Oh, when did you win it? What's your mile time? How many bananas you eat yesterday? Yay! Oh, nice grip! I have been trying to, so I, I had the flu, obviously, this weekend, last week. I've been taking a uh, product called Tylenol Flu, which genuinely, I don't believe it saved my life, but it improved the quality of my life drastically. But because I'm in Canada, the packaging is in English and French. So on the back, it says Tylenol Grip, which is French for flu. Grip soup! Piss off the grip! The grip of yawn. Grip flu. Penny, penny wise. Penny flu. Um, and I just can't get. Like my brain is trying to cook up some kind of Drake lyric. Mm, she in my head like a migraine. She got that Tylenol grip. Like there's something, there's something there and it just can't quite get the, like the neurons are just not, like they're leaving station A, but they're arriving at like station B. They're one off, but if they could, if they could ever connect, it would go hard. That's just called thinking. <laughs> Okay, okay. We made the, the pivot at least. Thoughts on Slice and Dice? Great game. I saw that it had an, uh, an update that came out. Problem as a streamer with Slice and Dice? I mean, let, I'm not trying to pit two bad bitches against each other. I play a lot of Slice and Dice, especially if I don't have internet access. It's a great phone game. It, it lacks the Balatro pageantry that a strategy game benefits from to also be very watchable on Twitch. It's, me the mechanics are rock solid. It just lacks a little bit of the, the, the Mama Liz's chili oil on top. That's the big thing. What about Bingo Bongle? I might give it a try. But the number of reviewers that I saw who were like, I actually like this more than Balatro, I'm like, you actually have to be an intellectually compromised agent for a foreign state. There's no shot, bro. Balatro is a, a 10 out of 10. Took years to make and perfect. Bingle Bangles out in early access. People are like, I actually like it a little bit more. Come on, don't be ridiculous. It's just, can, you, can we just be honest when we talk about things? Balatro is so boring. Wrong. Who saved? <laughs> Okay to have wrong opinions. I got plenty of wrong opinions, I'm sure.
it sucks to watch. It's hella ADHD. What does the criticism even mean? The game is the game is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. What does that mean? Specifically. I'm just waiting. It's stimulating, which is a compliment. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> We're using ADHD as a compliment now. Okay, I'm I'm way behind on the on the parlance. I thought it was the reason that uh, you can't choose a Halloween costume. The only thing I don't like about Balatro is that once you get about halfway up on the stakes, there are, and this happens in a lot of strategy games that are roguelites especially, some of those seeds are just doomed from the start, at least for like the average game player such as myself. Like there, there are runs where it really feels like, you know, like you skip the first two blinds because the first blind doesn't give you a reward anyway, and then the second blind you know, you're like, I'm not going to have enough money to get the reward from the skip of the first blind. Then you beat the first boss and you're like, okay, everything in the shop is free and I get a rare joker. And then the first shop is like two planets that don't do anything and two standard packs with none jokers and your reroll takes up 80% of your net worth and you're like, okay, time to lose. It does happen. It's still a great game though. The, the trick with Balatro, I think, is going to be figuring out, you know, once once you've unlocked everything you, you want to unlock, at least, what stake is the right stake to be playing on for fun. And it might actually be white stake, man. I don't know. Or maybe, maybe black stake, because then you get the eternal jokers, which is fun, but... Because I feel like the, the most fun runs in Balatro are the ones where you get killed on anti-12 or beyond. In order to maximize that fun, yeah, you should probably play on, like, white stake. Non-Balatro fans stay losing. It's damn true. What am I what am I doing? What am I doing? Mm, Scooty plays seated runs and he doesn't have a problem. Okay, well fucking I picked out my Halloween costume in four seconds. What's your excuse, bitch? Everybody's different. We got different skill sets, okay? We got different areas of expertise. My ass has zero problem reheating a frozen meal. Can you stay the same? I did say stay. Hold, hold. Who has problems with that? I don't know, like four people on the internet. I'm sorry, I meant he always has a fun time. I'm not knocking Scooty! This is a streamer, you gotta understand. Sometimes you're like, hey, this game's kind of difficult. And they're like, well, you know, did you know the best player of the fucking world at this actually thinks it's not that difficult? Okay, well, fucking, that's fine. We've all got a limited allotment of time on planet Earth, and we, we put it in different buckets as we see fit. Can't be the best person in the world at everything, bro. I'm sure there's there's areas of their life where I'm a little bit more efficient than Scooty. I don't know what they are. I wouldn't... I have a mutual degree of respect for Scooty. I wouldn't dare prognosticate. All I'm gonna say is I'm kind of fucking cracked at doing the dishes. That's like a non-issue, quite frankly. I'm insane at maintaining my sleep schedule. Actually, my... It, like, it, it's so insane at it that I don't even think about it. Like, it's not even a thing anymore. Like, if I was talking to a friend of mine that was my age, 
and they said, oh, my sleep schedule is so messed up, I would be like, what happened? We were supposed to have that shit locked down like age 27 probably. People have insomnia, man. I don't know. Skill difference. Hold, hold. Can't co-sign that one, King. I know. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw the message that said, bro, my shit is leaking hard right now. Oh, man. I know that there are people with genuine insomnia. Don't get me wrong. All I'm going to say, and this is, again, it's the same as the picky eater thing. It's from my own experience. I thought my own insomnia was baked in genetically until I started going to sleep at the same time every night and forcing myself to wake up at the same time every day. And I'm, I'm talking no exceptions. Not five times a week I do it. And then Saturday and Sunday, those are my cheat days where I stay up until 3 a.m. Every day, Friday night, 10 p.m. Saturday night, 10 p.m. Sunday night, 10 p.m. And 95% of my sleep problems went away just as a result of this one simple trick. Now, some people, even if they implement the trick, are still going to have problems sleeping, but... Do you fall asleep easy, though? Under, under 10 minutes, I'm lights out every night. And it wasn't always like that. You do also exercise a lot. I mean, I'm sure it helps. But I, I really think that the, the sleeping thing is just going to bed at the same time every day and then having so the, the real fuckery is the wake up. Because even if you have a bad sleep, you have to be up at the same time. That's why, that's how your sleep schedule gets sorted. No matter what, you know, my kid's going to get up 7.45 or 8. They have to be at daycare 9.30 or they have to be at a class at like 8.45 or something like that. So no, it's not like I can just be like, oh, we're going to hit the snooze button on that. So no matter what, I'm waking up like at the same time every day. Which means that I want to go to sleep at the same time every day because I got to wake up at the same time every day. I think it's you got to like... You got to work backwards from the wake up if you if you want to fix your sleep schedule. Is that what it means is that for the most part, the worst that can happen is I have like one or two days where I'm tired. And then you're tired all day and you go to sleep earlier that night and then you wake up at your normal time. Faint bunnies back, faint bunnies back. <clears throat> so your advice is have a kid? No, my advice is have some discipline. And even if you don't fall asleep for like two hours, wake up at the same time that you said you were going to wake up anyway. But in lieu of that discipline, having like a prison warden or a child that forces you to wake up at the same time in the morning might, you know, be like a shortcut or a long cut, I guess. Hold. Oh, at least we made it. We got to go a little later, but at least we made the pivot. And don't nap. The, the napping stuff is tough. I do eat a period of um, extreme tiredness. I would say every day around like 3, 3.45 p.m. But luckily I'm like just driving at that point, so I'm not doing anything too important. <laughs> I 
Hold, hold. Oh. What time do you go to bed? I'm like a 10.15 Andy. <clears throat> I would love to be a 9.30 Andy because I wake up at 5.45. Here's how cracked the sleep schedule is right now. I woke up today, it was like 5.47 and I woke up in a cold sweat and I was like, what the fuck happened? Why is it 5.47? I looked at my phone, I never set my alarms last night. My body still said, it's 5.45, wake up Samurai. I, I appreciated that. Could have screwed up my whole week. <clears throat> you set him every night? Yeah, I set him every night. <clears throat> Just put them on an auto scheduler? I don't know. I, I turn them on at night, I wake up in the morning, they're off. I don't know what to tell you. can't explain that. <laughs> Anybody else um, have their primary alarm still have text that you put on it for like a reminder? Like every day at 5.30, my first alarm goes off and it says like, drop check off at the bank plus call daycare. <laughs> that shit was from like May 2023. And then if I don't hit that one, I've always got call mom, it's mom's birthday that comes on at like 6.40. And then 6.45 is like call dad, dad's birthday. Android shit. <laughs> That's crazy. I will never, I, well, let me, never is not the right word to use here. I am going to resist using Google Calendar or at least letting it infect my personal life as long as possible. I'm on that like two meetings or appointments a week schedule. I hold the information in my head. I don't ever want, I understand why you would do it, but I never want to succumb to having to like start my day by looking at my calendar and figuring out what I got to do. I'm just not that kind of guy. I prefer to live a little bit improvisationally. I would forget everything. Um, I'm not gonna say it's never happened. But isn't that like the, the sizzle that makes the steak of life worth eating? Oops. Oh, am I? Hey, it's been 30 minutes, where am I? Oh yeah, I forgot we had a meeting today, sorry. <laughs> isn't that the, the spice that keeps life interesting? I don't know. We'd get fired? Okay, well, don't do that then. I personally like being employed. <laughs> okay, okay, I said not every take is good, okay? Not every take is good. How are you gonna sort your sleep schedule, but not this? Because my sleep schedule actually affects my quality of life. But, you know. Going to like an annual review where someone tries to sell me term life insurance doesn't really matter to me. Sorry, whole life insurance. Term is the good one, right? No disrespect to the life insurance salespeople in chat. Woo! <laughs> Yeah. 
You know what's crazy? Skim milk, 0%. Then you got 1% milk. Then you got 2% milk. What percentage is whole milk? Three? Three, three or three and a half. Holy. Okay, then what percentage is fucking half and half? Because my body's telling me that it should be 50% fat. Half and half is, is 10%? That's like an imperial stout, bro. It's half cream? Well, what, what percentage is cream? Why am I washed at this part now? <laughs> I feel like that's a that's a great like knowledge bowl question. Is like what what percentage milk fat is whole milk? What percentage milk fat is half and half? What percentage whole milk is heavy cream? That would be great. Then you'd really see those fucking nerds start to sweat. Uh, uh, uh. Reed's dairy heads would clean up. So true. I got a problem with the dairy industry as well. Had to buy heavy cream to cook a soup over Christmas. Couldn't find heavy cream in the store. Only thing I could find, whipping cream. <clears throat> it turns out, after uh, much Googling, Whipping cream is also known as heavy cream. It's the same fucking thing. Guess what? Whipped cream? Very, very different. Three letters change and the whole shit goes out the window. Heavy cream is like... Oh, that, that was literally... I was trying to put cream into a soup, but it looked exactly like shooting a can of whipped cream, which completely undermines the next action that I was going to do, so never mind. I even made the t -t 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 sound. All right, well, you can imagine how the joke would have gone if it weren't for that. Would have been like... <laughs> oh. We're so back. I'm going to use this joke next time I see my mom. <laughs> Moms who cook love the milk fat joke. Okay. What the hell is clotted cream? I hear you, man. Or what the hell is cottage cheese? Is it like corned beef? Hey, now, how many push-ups could you do? I don't know. I'm gonna say 23, if I had to guess. Not that many. I'm no Xanta, I'll tell you that. I got, like, my wrists are kind of fucked up. The, like, my, my weight is relatively low. My strength is okay. But my wrists are fucking... My wrist gets sore real quick, man. Hey, Anel, I love watching you. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Faint Bunny. Nice to see you. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> How many pull-ups you got? Three? Three, if I had to guess, I'm very much a legs Andy, not much of an arms Andrew. Every time I go to the playground, though, I do try to knock out a couple of sets of pull-ups while my kid's going down the slide, just because, like, what else am I going to do? Go down the slide too. 
It depends. Uh, it depends on the slide. A lot of these parks, they have the curly uh, slides. Not as fun to go down as an adult. A long, straight slide with some momentum can still be fun to go down as an adult, but the, the curvy slides are not... Uh, they're not fun when you're, like, over three feet tall. Because, like, your body is at the exit and the entrance to the curve the entire time you're on the slide. The static electricity of the plastic slides. Dude, on a sunny day, those kids are fucking crackling when they go down. It she fucking hurts? It does. It's like you're sliding on sandpaper. Then you touch a screw. <laughs> You got the Emperor Palpatine drip. But you're absolutely right, because people are saying they can't make a metal, because then you get the... I don't know what happened to this city, but like half of the parks in Vancouver, the slides are made out of metal, which renders them completely unusable for like the four months of the year that the playground's at its peak. You get there at like 8 a.m. and this shit is like a hot grill. Oh, I, okay, I'm glad I didn't jump, but I, I really, I, I thought I might have enough momentum to get up there. So plastic slides suck and metal slides suck. Mm, I see where you're going with this deal, Guiga. I'm sorry to tell you, it's just... A, a, it's just more thrilling to go down a slide than it is to go on a swing set, even a bad slide. Like, when you go to the amusement park, are you like, oh, Pog, get on the pirate ship that goes like this? Or are you like, oh, Pog, roller coaster that goes 100 meters into the air and then drops you at a 93 degree angle? <laughs> the pirate ship? Fucking 1960s ass Disney World. What about a water slide though? Water slides are the, the best slide, without a doubt. The only thing that sucks about water slides is that like, it's the temperature range in which they're at their peak is surprisingly narrow. Because you need the water to be warm and you also need the air to not be so cold that you freeze into an ice cube while waiting to go down the water slide. Like when we were in Florida, so admittedly it was like the first week of March, but I didn't want to, the hotel we had to stay at, Gaylord Palms, had a nice little like resort pool area. I couldn't get out of the pool and go to the water slide because it was too fucking cold to get out of the pool. Like, once I got into the pool, I had to stay in the, in the pool. It was like 63 degrees or something like that. Hold. Hold. When your swimming trunks come off and you gotta stay in the pool until everybody leaves, that wouldn't happen to me because I tie up the uh, I tie up the string. You guys get strings? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we get strings. Did you rent a cabana? No, I don't really get the cabana. I guess you get a spot that is like by the swimming pool. But like, I'm not paying money for that. I already have a spot by the swimming pool that costs money. It's called my hotel room.
What about chair vultures? The, the chair culture I'm still getting used to. I didn't realize that it was such a competition for the, the good uh, chairs at a resort pool. The what culture? I said the chair culture. You gotta wake up at like 4.45 a.m. so you can go down to the swimming pool at like 6, which is where they legally start allowing you to reserve chairs. Then you reserve your chairs like right next to the pool that you think you'll be spending your time at for like the whole day, and then you just go back to sleep on the chair. Having fun on a cruise is a lot of work. You won't catch me reserving a chair on the cruise. That's not gonna happen. I'm not like a... I'm on the cruise to be inside, outside. I'm not outside, outside. Hold. Also, there's something about like people who are on the cruise to tan that I'm like... Isn't it actually, like, um, like nuclear for your skin? Like, there's no clouds. You're in the middle of the ocean. 300 feet above the water. <laughs> Aren't you, like... Like, your shit's on the high broil, right? Like, that does... It's usually, like... Especially if you're just on a day at sea, too. It gets windy as fuck out there. It's actually, like, being inside of a hurricane. Like, it's just not pleasant to be on the, on the top deck sometimes. But, you know, I don't know, if you really need the tan, I guess. One thing I will tell you for sure, you will not catch me falling asleep without my shirt on. Had too many male roommates growing up. Well, in college. Ooh! You don't know that lifestyle? In the mid-2000s, in college, if you fell asleep first at a party, you basically became a target for accepted abuse, for ritualistic hazing-style punishments that, in hindsight, don't make sense. You fall asleep, they take out a, a permanent marker and start drawing penises on your face and, like, hate symbols and stuff like that. They pull out your dick and beat you off, and you'd wake up with, like, come on your leg and be like, whose cum is that? They'd be like, it's your cum, bro. You'd be like, why is there my cum on my leg? We'd be like, because we beat you off, brother. Because you fell asleep first, which means you're gay. And I'm like, well, how does that make any sense, man? You're the ones who beat me off. Sorry, sorry, I don't make the rules. You're the one who fell asleep. You made the classic party foul of falling asleep at 5.06 a.m. After drinking 15 beers, how dare you? Now we all gotta beat you off. Oh man. <laughs> me pretending to be asleep so everybody at the party beats me off, but actually I just wanted to get beaten off. <sighs> They're drawing fucked up hate symbols on my forehead and stuff like that that take three hours of scrubbing to come off. It's okay, it's worth it, it's worth it. <laughs> Mid-2000s, you had to be there. <laughs> oh, man. You had to be there. No, you didn't? Or you could, like, watch a movie or something like that. But I don't know if like that culture really existed that much before the movies. I think what was fucked up is the people who wrote like American Pie went to college in like 1987 or something like that. So then they wrote American Pie as like an extrapolation of like an exaggeration of that culture. But then my generation as preteens swallowed it hook, line, and sinker. When we went to college, all of a sudden we're drawing dicks all over everybody. Hold. Yeah! 
Yes! Relax yourself. Relax yourself. Okay. <laughs> Lock the fuck in, samurai. Just to, to touch another swimming pool. Oh, man. That's what it's all about. That, there's a swimming pool. Oh my god, a swimming pool. It took us two motherfucking hours. And we didn't even fall. <laughs> Yo, this is where Dan is, dude. Dan's jump. He's been here for like three days. Oh, man. Oh, like it here. How'd you do that? I learned from the best, brother. <laughs> I told you, different people are good at different fucking things. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm not that bad at jumping in this game. I'm pretty bad at, like, the, the physics puzzling parts, for sure. Because Chibli told me his jumping strat, and his jumping strat really helped me out. Like, that one, that's supposed to be the hard one? That's not even close to as hard as the sandbags, brother. I never want to see the sandbags again as long as I live. Oh. <laughs> hey, Anel, you've made much progress. Very talented. Thank you, Faint Bunny. Thank you. I appreciate that. I don't know what to tell you, brother. <laughs> Think bunny reformed, reformed. Oh, that was close, too. Okay, we gotta make it, we gotta make it in time for Jackbox. Even though this was a very long segment with minimal progress, it was hard progress. <laughs> so we take it for sure. Come on, we gotta go one more though. Hey, Anel, you're my favorite streamer ever. So funny. 10 out of 10. You will never be faint, Bunny. No disrespect. Dude, you want <laughs> I lost it. I, lo I lost the pattern, bro. Return to Chib. Hmm? 
One more. So quiet here without the squeaking. I know it sounds like a damn spa. Hey, Valentine, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Oh. It's 12. It's 12. I got to call it. But still, that was good. 